This is ABC 15 Mornings. Mass mandates heading to court. Phoenix is yet you know, at the epicenter of another major issue in regards to the continued impacts of this pandemic. Arguments to be made in a matter of hours. The battle over Afghanistan. Potential here for growing uh, terrorist capabilities and terrorist threats uh, deep within the heartland of, of, uh, of Afghanistan the way bin Laden did is very real. Is the country about to fall to the Taliban? You've seen the images of stranded passengers after airlines canceled flights. I'm investigator Joe Ducey with what you should do if it happens to you. Storm chances in the forecast. What you do after a storm is just as important as what you do uh, before a storm hits. An Operation Safe Roads report gets you ready for what's ahead. The road to the Super Bowl begins tonight. Are you ready for some football? We sure are, right? We are ready for some football. It. Yeah, bring it on. I mean, it's hard to believe it's here and we're thrilled that it is. We hope that you're right here along with us thinking, yes, beat those Cowboys. Feels good to say Excited that. Excited for that. <laughs> Thank you so much for starting your day. We do appreciate it. We've got a lot to get to at this hour. Yeah, we begin right now with uh, that court hearing, of course, that we could talk about with the country and the mask mandate, the county rather, and mask mandates going before a judge later on today. Our Mark Thompson has more from right outside Maricopa County Superior Court. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you, Kayla. Good morning, Nick. And uh, attorneys for both sides of this case, they're going to be giving their arguments this morning starting at 9 o'clock. And this could have huge implications. A teacher actually filed a lawsuit against the Phoenix Union High School District's mask mandate, arguing that it goes against state law. The suit alleges that Phoenix Union's governing board lacks the legal authority to actually require a mask mandate. The district argues that it must protect the safety of staff and students. Several other Phoenix school districts, they're also requiring masks. This case could have national implications. The plaintiff, which is the parent, wants a restraining order against the school's mandate and the defense, the school, asking for a dismissal of this case. Some law experts say that the judge has to weigh the issue of parental rights versus the safe educational environment for students. We spoke with a professor at Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law who says that the, if the district loses this case, it could decide to send kids back home. Do we flat out have to close these schools again? Do we have to do it if we see outbreaks of conditions that legitimize you know, the need to close schools temporarily and go virtual yet again in Arizona because of these specific outbreaks? School districts may still have the capacity to make that decision. I'm very sure none of them want to have to go there. And a decision in this case, it could come as early as this afternoon. We're going to be in the courtroom, and of course, we'll be following this case every step of the way. Reporting live in downtown Phoenix this morning, Mark Thompson, ABC 15, Arizona. I'll send it back to you. All right, Mark, thank you. Yet caught in the middle here, the students, the parents, the staff members, a coalition of education groups. They are saying that the law which prohibits public and charter schools from enforcing mask mandates is unconstitutional. Well, Governor Ducey's office responding, saying mask mandates are unenforceable and will not hold up in court. Maricopa Community Colleges will require face masks inside all campus facilities and offices. The fall semester gets underway in a week for the 10 community colleges. The district does recommend students get vaccinated, hosting clinics on each campus starting on the first day of school. Let's talk about that most accurate forecast this morning as we head into the weekend. Uh, Mother Nature kind of giving us a, a slow approach this morning. Well, she's tapping the brake, it seems, a little bit, Iris. <laughs> yeah, finally, right after what's been a stormy start pretty much every morning this week. And by the way, if you're waking up thinking, man, all these storms, I need a car wash. I, I don't know. My advice is maybe hold off or at least get a rain check because we are certainly not done with our storm potential. Even though we're off to a quieter start this morning, we've essentially got a chance for thunderstorms every single day through the weekend and in into early next week. But again, as you get ready to walk outside, Desert Doppler radar all in the clear. We've got some lingering clouds, but at this point, not tracking any rain in the Phoenix area. And I think your morning drive weather wise is at least going to be quieter. Muggy though, so you might need to turn on that AC, at least on low. Temperatures in the 70s to 80s, but that humidity is elevated. We're officially sitting in the low 80s now, mid 80s by 8 a.m. Then we'll see that temperature into the upper 80s by 9 o'clock. There's a 10% chance of a stray shower this morning, again, under some of those thicker clouds, but 
so far all quiet. Now things will change by the time you're getting ready to head home from work, especially if you commute anytime after 5 p.m. Maybe you've got plans to go to the Cardinals game tonight. Thunderstorms are possible and those chan chances are cranking up this evening into tonight. Our high temperature will stay in the 90s today, but these storm chances will continue tonight and into tomorrow and throughout the weekend too. So I'm going to show you what hazards you need to be on the lookout for because flooding will again be a risk, but we could also see some stronger winds. I'll talk about that a little further in just a few minutes. But Megan Thompson has been watching our roads, of course, all week long. And of course, the rain's been an issue. We've gotten our practice driving on those wet roads, but today easing in a little bit into the weekend. Finally for Friday, Iris, I think that we all deserve it. Let's get a check sponsored by Accident Law Group of what you can expect when you head out the door. This is a live view for you of the I-17 near the stack where we do see some cars out there already at this time of the morning. And just a couple issues to warn you about as I move to the maps. You see that crash icon still on your screen there. We have two crashes near this area, one off the freeway. This is 19th Avenue and Union Hills Drive. Just wanted to keep you aware of that one. I-17 southbound near the 10. We do still have a crash that is reported off to the right. In Tempe, off the freeway McClintock Drive, the road is blocked from Weber to Curry. Keep that in mind if that is a part of your commute in the East Valley in Tempe. We do still have some weather related closures to keep you posted on 238. That road is closed through Maricopa right here to the 85. Still no ETA on when that one will reopen, Nick. 605, the Phoenix police chief suspended and others demoted this morning after an investigation into the gang charges filed against people protesting police brutality and excessive force. Those charges have since been dropped. The report criticizing the department's role and the decisions to falsely charge a group of protesters as a criminal street gang. The city now asking the Arizona Attorney General's office to investigate any criminal matters that could come out of this investigation. After it was released, the Phoenix City Manager issued a one day suspension and written reprimand of Police Chief Jerry Williams and other members of her executive staff for being demoted to commander positions. ABC 15 investigator Dave Biscoping has been following this story since the very beginning. You can read and watch all of his reports on the now dismissed gain charges up on ABC15.com slash protest. Okay, moms and dads, this is for you. You can expect your second child tax credit payment today. Some of you are going to get as much as $300 per child, and this doesn't have to be a guessing game either. Just use the update portal on the IRS website. You can track monthly checks. Some families are going to receive a total of $3,600 this year. It's a lot of money though for families. Yes, it is. I'll check your gas tank, check your tire treads. Also, don't forget the windshield That's wipers. That's it. Yes, we're talking about a monsoon checklist from the travel experts before you ever get in the car. Our Megan Thompson joins us now to talk about what you need to do after the storm clears. Well, Kaylee and Nick, we always say it, right? Maybe wash your car and then the rain seems to come down. It's something we do here in the valley. But did you know that you should actually take your car through the car wash after it rains? What you do after a storm is just as important as what you do uh, before a storm hits. The monsoon rain may seem like the free cleanup you've been looking for, washing the dust and dirt right off your car. Any water that's being picked up as you're driving, that's collecting oil, uh, chemicals. AAA's Aldo Vasquez says the sky shower actually could cause more harm than good. Uh, not only can rain ring down uh, water, but it's combining with a lot of chemicals in the air and pollutants and rain down uh, acid rain, and that can uh, deteriorate the paint on your vehicle. The longer you go without washing your car after even a short shower, the more damage you'll start to notice. So it's very important to make sure that you wash your vehicle and the under undercarriage after a storm. If you don't want to go to the car wash constantly during the monsoon season, experts suggest making sure you dry your vehicle off once it's safely parked with a microfiber cloth. Taking action before and after you hit the road is something unique to Arizona drivers during this season, but it could make all the difference in keeping you safe and saving your car. We put those before and after monsoon checklist items in this story on abc15.com slash roads. And do you have a road question or an issue you want the Operation Safe Roads team to look into? You can call the hotline at 833-AZ-ROADS or email roads at abc15.com. 609 next on ABC 15 mornings. We've seen plenty of shortages since this pandemic started, but this latest one facing the country could have deadly consequences. 
And Cardinals preseason kicks off today here at State Farm Stadium, but that also means more traffic. We could already see the parking lot is ready to go. We'll show you how the city of Glendale is preparing. New this morning, the Taliban capturing another four cities in Afghanistan. The offensive gradually encircling Kabul weeks before the U.S. is set to officially withdraw from that country. U.S. troops are deploying to the embassy there to help State Department employees leave. In the meantime, thousands of Afghans have fled their homes, worried that the Taliban will impose a brutal government, eliminate women's rights, and also conduct public executions. One case of COVID-19 is shutting down the third busiest shipping port in the world in China. That country's zero tolerance policy, putting all inbound and outbound services on pause. Industry experts say this will cause supply chain problems well into the holiday shopping season. Now the country's running out of affordable naloxone. That's the drug used to help save people from overdosing. Right now, Pfizer is the only company offering naloxone at a discounted price, but a manufacturing issue forced production to stop back in April. Pfizer says it isn't expected to get back on track until at least February. Big news in entertainment this morning. Jamie Spears' father, uh, I should say Jamie Spears, that's Britney Spears' dad, he is willing now to step down as her conservator but only when the time is right. He says there's no reason for him to resign or be immediately replaced. Her attorney filed a petition to remove him from her conservatorship. As you know, it's been so highly publicized. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Good morning. You have made it just almost maybe one more commute to go on this Friday morning. Hi there. I'm Megan Thompson taking a look at the roads for you. This is a live look of the I-10 near Broadway Road. Looking really nice cars moving along. Plenty out there, but no brake lights at this point in that area. As we move to your maps, you can see just a little bit of slowing there along Grand Avenue. And as we zoom in here to the I-17, we look good on all sides there. I-17, the 101 and the 51 giving us green conditions here at this point of the morning with those speeds at or above 65 miles per hour. You may want to slow down just a little bit in that area. We do have a hazard to report to you. This one is off the freeway in Tempe McClintock. The road is blocked from Weber to Curry Road. We're working to get you some more information of what's going on there. Now another issue to warn you about if you're traveling on the I-40 near Holbrook, we are learning that the eastbound lanes east of Holbrook at milepost 292 are closed due to a crash. No ETA on when that one will reopen. Your desert drive times looking great on this Friday. I-10 eastbound from the loop through the three to the mini stack 20 minutes. The I-17 southbound from the 101 to the stack 11 minutes and state route 51 southbound from the loop 101 to the mini stack 13 minutes and Iris still ahead. We're going to talk about the Broadway curve. There is more weekend construction going on and of course we also know that might be impacted due to the weather. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Of course that could change right as those storms start to move in and today I want you to be weather aware because we are on storm watch, especially as we head into this evening and that's that's going to impact potentially your evening drive. I want to show you the alerts just issued yesterday, but they're in effect officially for the Phoenix Metro, Central Arizona and Southeast Arizona. I'm talking flash flood watches. We've already seen that flash flood threat pretty much all week long as these storms have been producing some heavy rain. Well, as our storm chances continue today into the weekend, our risk for flash flooding is also staying elevated. So be mindful of the fact that heavy rain will continue to be possible. But this just in two, we've been talking about the severe weather risk and I told you we had a chance for some severe thunderstorms today, but that risk area that marginal risk area has now been expanded to cover all of central Arizona, including the entire Phoenix metro area. And I know the word marginal doesn't sound significant, but it's the first level that first threshold of that severe weather outlook. So potentially some damaging winds with these thunderstorms upwards of 58 miles an hour. Blowing dust will also be a threat. And of course that flash flood risk with the main concern area across central Arizona and areas along the muggy on rim. Now this morning off to a quiet start as you get ready to walk out the door. We do have partly cloudy skies. It is muggy and a little bit warmer in some spots with temperatures in the 80s, but we are looking at rain free conditions across the valley with just some lingering spotty showers in La Paz and Yavapai County. Otherwise, it's quiet across the rest of the state, but that will change as we get some daytime heating interacting with all that moisture that we've got in place. Plus, we're watching a disturbance sitting south of the border that will help enhance that storm 
potential and storms get going this afternoon into the evening. Notice that they first fire up along the muggy on rim. We could get some strong to severe storms in spots like Globe, in Payson, in areas like Safford, even Heber and Show Sholo. Then those storms move from northeast to southwest and check out the timing by 7 p.m. We've got a few storms here in central Arizona, including right here, of course, in the valley and up near Prescott and Sedona. And then that threat just continues into tonight with more storms moving in to the valley by 10, 11 o'clock, even midnight tonight. And again, some of them could be strong to severe and big rainmakers too. So you've got to watch for that for that evening drive, especially if you commute after 5 p.m. Temperatures as you walk outside, it's 77 in Fountain Hills, 83 in Glendale, and 79 in Levine. Across Arizona, upper 80s at Lake Havasu, 50s and 60s in northern Arizona. Today, we'll make it back into the 90s, but I'm talking a high of 98 degrees today, so a couple degrees lower than where we made it yesterday, with hundreds in western Arizona. Now, today's high, 98 degrees, and we'll likely be reaching that high temperature by the middle of the afternoon into that evening, so around 4 o'clock. And as you're thinking of that evening commute, again, temperatures in the upper 90s. It'll be muggy by 5 p.m. Start watching for storms. They'll be moving off the mountains and popping here in the valley likely after then. And then by 6 p.m. We could already start to see a few storms moving in with that potential for more storms as we go into tonight. A low of 80 degrees tonight. Showers could linger into tomorrow morning, then a high of 97 with another chance for evening storms tomorrow. We're back into the hundreds Sunday, but only the low hundreds with storm chances continue for most of the days next week. Iris, thanks. It's 618 only here on ABC 15 mornings. We've all seen the images, right? Passengers stranded at Sky Harbor and other airports across the nation as airlines cancel flight after flight after flight. Well, the Let Joe Know team looking out for your rights, showing us what to do if your future flight is canceled. <laughs> They're just not prepared for what we have right now. He's Willis Orlando with Scott's Cheap Flights, talking about Spirit and American Airlines recently canceling thousands of flights, leaving some passengers confused. Is there a flight anytime soon in another airline? Orlando believes the real issues are staffing problems, but the airlines are mostly blaming weather. There may be a reason for that. Weather is the one out they have. Federal rules state that if an airline cancels your flight outright, you could get your money back if you request it, but if they just delay it for an act of God like weather. The airline's not on the hook for doing anything for you other than getting you from point A to point B. It could be a credit or a flight days later. So what are your rights? Again, you can get a refund and rebook elsewhere if the airline cancels, and even if there's a significant delay, but the government hasn't defined significant or how weather plays into it. What significantly altered is varies by airline. Experts say a two hour delay or more should be enough. Also be proactive instead of relying on the airline. Choose an alternate itinerary on the same airline, preferably or one of their partners um, that you'd rather take and approach them and say, hey, I've got a solution. Can you rebook me on this flight instead? And even if you're frustrated, Orlando says his clients have gotten even better help by treating overworked customer service people with respect. Go to abc15.com slash let Joe know for more advice, like checking airline policies first and why booking the lowest fares may not be your best move. I'm investigator Joe Deuce. If you got a problem, let me know. Well, looking for something to do this weekend, the Phoenix Film Festival opens tonight at the Harkins Scottsdale 101. 99 feature films and 115 short films will be screened over the next 11 days. One of those is a local documentary about how small businesses here in Arizona navigated the pandemic, especially during those early months. It's called Close for COVID. It'll be shown next Saturday. Head to Phoenix Film Festival for tickets and also the schedule information. Well, it does take a lot more than just rubbing some dirt on it. You know what we're talking about. School sports are back. With that can come injuries. So up next, how to properly recover and get your kiddos back out there to play. I'm Angie Cayley at the Mesa Temple Visitor Center. Coming up, we'll take a tour and explain why it's about so much more than just one church. And you can stay ahead of all our monsoon storms by downloading that free ABC 15 mobile app. Just use your phone camera app there. Scan that QR code. It's on your screen right now. You'll be able to see the radar in your neighborhood, around your community, at your school, at your work, wherever you want it. And it's completely free. Well, something to think about on this Friday morning. Being alone doesn't have to be lonely. On today's bulletin board, we're going to share why me time matters and how to be happy alone. First, start small. Like most things, being happy alone, it is a learned skill. In fact, the hardest part might be 
getting started. You could meditate for a few minutes, take a walk at lunchtime. And once you do get more comfortable, just stretch out that me time. Make plans for you too. Maybe it's time to revisit an old hobby or binge watch a Netflix series you've wanted to see. You gotta treat this time like a special date with yourself or try something new, visit a museum. Sign up for a painting or a fitness class. Learn how to sing really well for the next time you go to a, a karaoke bar or something. This is a chance to figure out what you really like. You know, in today's world, we rarely have a chance for solitude. So instead of feeling lonely, alone time does allow our minds to wander, to get creative and find more emotional balance. So if you do know how to be happy alone too, it's probably likely you're gonna be a lot happier with others in the long run. And that is today's bulletin board. A new school year means sports are back for many students and this morning we got some tips from health experts on how to bounce back from a sports injury like a pro. This morning, Dr. Kalichi Okora from the Mayo Clinic says start with sleep and nutrition. If you maybe are, are tired, you can have poor mechanics and don't forget the physical therapy. Physical therapy is just as important in getting patients back to sport. You have to make sure you're adequately going to physical therapy two to three times a week and they kind of guide your process in terms of recovery. Oh yeah, I've had physical therapy help me out many a time. No matter what you do, don't try to rush right back into practice either. Kind of warm it up yes, gradually. You don't want to get hurt again, that's for sure. Hey, we're cruising right along for you on this Friday. Up next at 630, open for business. If you think Amazon takes too long to deliver your stuff, we share the company's latest efforts to get stuff to you faster to your front door. And football is back here at State Farm Stadium, but that also means more traffic. We'll tell you how to get around it. And you know, Mother Nature going to get in on the mix too, or at least trying to with storms possible just in time for that Cardinals game. I'm going to take you through that storm forecast and we'll talk about when they could start rolling into the valley.